Hello, welcome to the another article reading section. Today we will read broadband silicon photonic directional coupler using asymmetric waveguide based phase control. The authors are J.Q. Liu, Han Yun, Yun Wang, Jitian Chen, Fan Zhang, Nicholas A. F. Zagir, and Lukas Kostovsky. All belongs to Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, University of British Columbia, UBC, Vancouver, BC, Canada. Abstract. We design and demonstrate broadband directional couplers that use asymmetric waveguide based phase control sections on the silicon or insulator platform. Broadband directional couplers with various power splitting ratios, including 10%, 90%, 20%, were realized for both transverse electric and transverse magnetic modes, PETM modes. Some of the devices exhibit bandwidths in excess of 100 nanometer and all in excess of 75 nanometer. The footprints of the TE mode couplers are 32 micrometer by 1.3 micrometer or less and those of TM mode couplers are 13 micrometer by 1.3 micrometer or less. So these are the references and links. We will come later on on that. Begin. Introduction. Optical power couplers are essential devices for splitting and combining light in photonic systems. In photonic integrated circuits, a compact wavelength independent power coupler is highly desirable, especially for data communication applications such as wavelength division multiplexing and signal switching. Directional couplers have been widely used as power couplers due to their simple configurations and the ease with which they can be fabricated in the silicon or insulator platform. However, the coupling ratios of converse, conventional DCs are known to be highly sensitive to their operating wavelengths. In the past two decades, much effort has gone into developing broadband power couplers and many papers have been published in this topic. The references are from 6 to 13. Among these works, Maxander interferometer based couplers, which is referred in reference number 9, 12, 13, which integrate an MJ die structure into either DCs, this directional coupler, or multi mode interferometers. Exhibit. <coughs> Sorry. Broadband performance. But their footprints are usually on the scale of hundreds of micrometers square. Adiabatic couplers that use tapered waveguides split ratio also have promising broadband properties, but again at the cost of large footprints. The recently proposed hybrid plasmodic couplers are both broadband and small in size. However, they require plasmodic metal deposition, which increases the complexity 
and cost of fabrication. With this work, we demonstrate two cross two asymmetric waveguide assisted directional couplers that are broadband operate over a wide wavelength range, compact in size, simple in structure, and easy to fabricate. Couplers with various splitting ratios were designed to operate in the wavelength region from 1500 nanometer to 1600 nanometer for either transverse electric mode or transverse magnetic mode that were fabricated using SOI strip waveguides. Our measurements results show that the bandwidth of our devices are greater than 75 nanometer with some of them greater than 100 nanometer. The footprints of our devices are 31.4 micrometer into 1.3 micrometer or less for the remote couplers and 12.5 micrometer into 1.3 micrometer or less for PM mode coupler. Now coming on the design. Our two cross two broadband national couplers are based on 220 nanometer high SOI strip waveguides. Such a device as shown in figure 1 consists of a symmetric coupler followed by an asymmetric waveguide based phase control section followed by a second symmetric coupler where linearly tapered waveguides are used to connect the asymmetric waveguides to the symmetric couplers. Each of the symmetric couplers consists of two 500 nanometer wide waveguides separated by a 200 nanometer gap. The phase control section consists of one 400 nanometer wide waveguide and one 600 nanometer waveguide separated by a 300 nanometer gap. The tapered conducting waveguides are each one micrometer long. See the top view in figure one. The length of the symmetric couplers and the phase control section are defined as L1 and L2 respectively. We use four 90 degree waveguide beds with radius R for the inputs and outputs of our couplers. The radius R for the TE and TM mode couplers are chosen to be 5 micrometer and 10 micrometer respectively. As shown in the top view of figure 1, which is labeled with white arrows, the light is lost into one of the input ports at the left side of a broadband national coupler. When propagating along the symmetric coupler on the left side, the light will couple from one waveguide to another and coupling ratio is wavelength dependent. In the symmetric, in the asymmetric waveguide based phase control section, the light confined in each waveguide propagates through without coupling and will be phase shifted relative to the light in the other waveguide. After that, the light will couple in the symmetric coupler on the right side and finally exit from the two outputs. The idea behind this design is to introduce a small phase shift between the two symmetric couplers by using asymmetric waveguides to compensate for the wavelength dependent coupling ratio of the symmetric couplers. So, idea behind this design is to introduce a small phase shift between the two symmetric couplers by using the asymmetric waveguide to compensate for the wavelength dependent coupling ratio of the symmetric coupler. Okay. Now, 2.2 theoretical analysis. So, it's, it's very important to draw the attention that this, this phase shift has been introduced into uh, so phase uh, between the two symmetric waveguide 
uh, by asymmetric so that wavelength dependent coupling ratio can be can be overcome or can be compensated now let us see what is the working principle 2.2 theoretical analysis we use the transfer matrix method to analyze our device. Transfer matrix method. The relationship between input and output electric field of the coupler can be expressed as E3, E4, left hand matrix is equal to C dot PT dot P dot PT minimums dot C into E1, E2. Where E1 and E2 are the electric fields at the inputs and E3 and E4 represent the electric fields at two output at the two outputs as shown in figure one. Matrix C is the coupling matrix of the symmetric coupler. And matrix P describes the propagation matrix of the phase control section. So matrix C is the coupling matrix of symmetric so since it has two symmetric couplers so c that is why 2c and p is the propagation matrix of the phase section matrices pt and pt inverse are the propagation matrix matrices of the tapered waveguide waveguides at the right and left side of the phase control section respect value. The coupling matrix C is given by C is equal to T minus JK minus JK T into E to power minus J pi by lambda either bracket N plus plus N minus into L minus alpha by 2 into L1 where alpha is the propagation loss in 500 nanometer wide silicon waveguide and we assume that the propagation losses of all of the waveguides in our devices are the same and have been taken to be 2.7 dB per centimeter. See, for example, 14, reference number 14. The straight through coefficient, straight through coefficient T and the cross coupling coefficient K are given by 15, 16. So T is equal to cos of pi delta D divided by lambda L1 and K is equal to sine of pi delta and effective pi lambda L1. So these are the coupling and cross coupling straight through coupling coefficient T. Okay. They are <coughs> N plus and N minus are the effective indices of the lowest order symmetric plus and anti-symmetric minus mode. So effective refractive index of symmetric and anti-symmetric modes. See figure 2a. Okay. Respectively. Delta and effective is the difference of the effective indices of the modes. That is, delta and effective is equal to n plus minus of n minus. That is symmetric refractive index and anti symmetric refractive index. As shown in figures 2c and 2a. Lambda is the wavelength. The distribution of modes and their effective indices are calculated using the mode solution. By numerical solutions in corporation 70. The propagation matrix P is given by P is equal to e to power minus j 2 pi n1 divided by lambda into L2 minus alpha divided by 2 into L2 0 0 and this propagation matrix is for propagation matrix. Let us see. The matrix P describes the propagation matrix of phase control section, okay, where uh, five, uh, 600 and 400 nanometers both wavelengths are here. Yeah, so, propagation matrix is this, where N1 and N2 are the effective in 
indices of mode 1 and mode 2 in the phase control section respectively. Here, we as shown in figure 2b, mode 1 refers to the fundamental mode. That is, in fact, preliminarily confined in waveguide 1 and mode 2, mode 2 refers to the next higher order mode. That is, in fact, preliminarily confined in the waveguide 2. The value of N1 and N2 are calculated and shown in figure, figures 2D and 2F. Here we have assumed that PT, that is the taper waveguide, as is, can be approximated by PT is equal to e to power minus j theta t1 minus alpha by 2 lt is 0 and this 0 e to power minus j theta t2 minus alpha by 2 into lt. That is the equation number 5. Where theta t1 and theta 2 are the phase shifts in the 500 nanometer to 600 nanometer and 500 nanometer to 400 nanometer. 500 to 6 and 500 to 400 nanometer tapered waveguide respectively. LT is the tapered waveguide length which is 1 micrometer in our design. We determine theta T1 and theta 2 as a function of the wavelength using the FDDT solution by numerical solution in calculation 17 again. When E1 is the input electric field, the power splitting ratio at the cross port eta cross and at the through port eta through are, covered, uh, are given by cross port. So E4 square divided by E3 plus E4 square. So at through port E3 square divided by E3 square plus E4 square. Now, using equation 6, we are able to find the values of L1 and L2 for a desired broadband splitting ratio response. We plot the cross splitting ratio, eta cross as a function of L1 and L2 at the central wavelength of 1550 nanometer as shown in figures 3a and 3b. We also plot the maximum deviation of eta cross over a 100 nanometer spectral range that is from 1500 nanometer to 1600 nanometer as function of L1 and L2 as illustrated in figure 3C and 3D. The maximum deviation of eta cross is defined as eta cross, that, sorry, delta eta cross is equal to modulus of eta cross lambda minus lambda cross 50-50 max, maximum division. Okay. To obtain the optimal L1 and L2 for the desired broadband splitting ratio, we can look for the overlap between a desired eta cross and a small delta eta cross region. As shown in figure 3, dash lines and stars provides the provide this example of how to choose optimal parameter for 10% to 90% and 50% to 50% coupling. So 2.3 MDDT solution. The TMM transfer matrix method simulation provides a basic range of optimal L1s and L2s. The entire structures are further simulated and optimize to using three dimensional finite difference time domain 3D MDDT method 17. Here, as an example, we present the simulation results for 50 50 broadband national couplers. Figure 4A and 4B, respectively, shows the power distribution of TMA boards in broadband national coupler at three different wavelengths. The optimal device dimensions for the TE board couplers are R1 is equal to 12.4 micrometer and L2 is equal to 6 micrometer. Why those RTM mode coupler are L1 is equal to 2.2 micrometer and L2 is equal to 6.1 micrometer. 
Other parameters such as waveguide width and gaps are given in figure one. As shown in figures 5a and 5b, the ability simulation results for broadband dash the couplers are in good agreement with those calculated by using the transfer matrix method. In figures 5a and 5b, we plot and compare the ability simulation results for 50-50, 50% conventional DCs with our design. In the comparison, the conventional DCs consist of two 500 nanometer wide strip waveguide separated by a 200 nanometer gap. Within the 100 nanometer wavelength range from 50 nanometer to 60 nanometer, the deviations of eta cross for our TE mode and TM mode couplers are only plus minus 3.5 percent or plus minus 1.5 percent respectively. As shown in figure 5b. Five. However, large deviations are seen in both the TE and TM modes conventional DCs. In conclusion, for both the TE and TM modes, the power splitting ratio of the broadband dash couplers are much less sensitive to the operation wavelength than those of the conventional DCs. Fabrication and measurement. Fabrication. Our broadband dash couplers were fabricated using electron beam lithography on a SOI wafer with 220 nanometer thick silicon on a 3 micrometer thick marine oxide layer. After etching, the chip had a 2 micrometer thick silicon dioxide layer deposited on the waveguides by using plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. Broadband dioxide couplers with various power splitting ratio have been fabricated. All of the couplers were designed to be characterized using an indirect measurement method. Figure 6a shows an optimal image of a fabricated test structure. We characterize each of the broadband dash couplers by using it as output recombiner of a 1 cross 2 MJ die, where the input splitter was a broad ba balanced Y junction splitter. The asymmetric MJ die had a delay length of 360 micrometer. Gritty couplers were used to couple light into and out of the MJ die. Strip waveguides. Connecting the GC to the MJI were 500 nanometer wide by 220 nanometer high silicon nanowires. To calibrate the insertion loss of the input output GCs, calibration structures having the same input output configurations as the test structures were also fabricated. This is shown in figure 6b. <laughs> Measurements of 50 50 broadband DCs. To characterize our devices, we used an exilate. 81600B tunable laser as the input source and both channels of an agilate 81635A optical power sensor at the output detector. The E and TM both fiber array were used to inject signal into the input GCs and to collect the output signal from the two output GCs. The pitch of fiber within the fiber arrays matched the 127 nanometer spacing between the GC on uh, gritty coupler or chip, making it convenient to align fibers to the input and output GCs and to measure the two output spectra simultaneously. Here, we show and analyze the measurements result of 50 50 broadband dash the coupler. Figures 7a and 7b present the MJ die output spectra for the TE and TM modes respectively in which the insertion loss introduced by the GC have been calibrated out. The extension ratios of a MJ die refer to the power ratio with difference on the logarithmic scale of the two output when one is at a maximum, uh, at a minimum and other is at the maximum. For the T mode spectra as shown in figure 7a, the extension ratio greater than 20 dB over 100 nanometer wavelength span from 1500 to 1600 nanometer. The access loss of the TE mode MJ die is less than 1 dB, which indicates the access loss of the TE mode coupler is less than 1 dB. For the TM mode spectra as shown in figure 7b, the extension ratio exceeds 30 dB over the wavelength range from 1500 nanometer to 1590, and the access loss of the TM mode coupler is less than 0.7 dB. We attribute the access loss to the sidewall roughness of 
as soy wave guides as the te board has larger overlap with the side walls of that soy wave guide that the te board the te board coupler suffers higher access loss it needs to be measured that here the measured access loss also includes the loss in the mj die using the ers of interference spectra at the mj die output we extracted the power splitting ratios of our couplers which are given by 20 eta cross equal to half plus minus half into root of 1 minus 10 ers divided by 10 minus 1 divided by 10 ers plus 1 square and this is the cross and through is 1 minus cross the extracted power splitting ratio E cross are shown in figure 7C and 7D. We use A plus minus 1 dB bandwidth and an average measured splitting ratio to evaluate the performance of a device. The plus minus 1 dB bandwidth is defined as the wavelength span over which deviation of the extracted eta cross are within plus minus 1 dB of the desired value. For example, the plus minus 1 dB bandwidth of a 50-50 coupler is the wavelength span over which its Eta cross is within 63.1 percent, that is minus 2 dB to 39.8, and that is minus 4 dB. While that of a 10 percent to 90 percent is minus 10 dB, coupler is within 12.6 percent, that is minus 9 dB to 7.9 percent, that is minus 11 dB. As shown in figures 3, 7C, and 7D, the plus minus 1 dB limits are marked out by black dashed line. We define the average measured splitting ratio for a particular coupler as the means of a expected power splitting ratio. Accordingly, as shown in figure 7C, the 5050TE board coupler has a 88 nanometer bandwidth over the wavelength range from 15 to 12 to 16 nanometer. As well as an average measured splitting ratio of 46.1 to 53.9 percent. As shown in figure 7D, the 5050 TA board coupler has a bandwidth of 97 nanometer from 1500 nanometer to 1597 and an average measured splitting ratio of 48.76 51.24. It also shows its uh, it is best performance in the wavelength range from 1500 nanometer to 1590 nanometer, where the deviations of the extracted eta cross are within plus minus 0.15 dB. For the wavelengths above 1590 nanometer, the ex extracted eta cross of the 5050 nanometer of sorry 5050 percent TA mode coupler deviates from the simulation results. The reason is that our TA mode GC show high insertion loss at the wavelength above 1590 and they suppress the measurable ERs. According to equation 7, smaller ER indicates more deviation from 5050 power splitting. At wavelengths above 1590 nanometer, the ER shown in figure 7b are limited by our measurement due to the insertion loss of the TA board dritic coupler and thus the extracted eta cross shown in figure 7d deviates from 5050 power splitting. Our 5050 TM board coupler would appear to work better if the insertion loss of our TM board GC are lower at the wavelengths above 1590 nanometer. In addition, please, uh, please note that although the definition of plus minus 1 dB bandwidth appears to be loose for evaluating the 5050 couplers, the extracted eta cross of our 5050 couplers are well confined within a 1 dB bandwidth from 0 dB to minus 1 dB of their design value which are shown in figure 7D and 7D, 7C and 7D. The MDTT simulation results are also shown by the blue dash lines in figure 7C and 7D. Good agreement is seen between the simulated and the measured results. When comparing the performance of the 50-50, the TE mode and, T, and the 50-50 TE mode coupler, the extracted eta cross of the TE mode coupler is found to be less uniform than that of a TE mode coupler. This phenomenon will be discussed below. So we will read later on section 3.3. Till then, see you again.